So in this video, we're going to be talking about the aperture stop of an optical system and its associated ray, the marginal ray. Uh, well, first of all, why do we care about aperture stops? Why do we care about these uh, weird sounding things? Uh, well, up till this point, we've sort of been assuming that lenses were infinite in extent, or that if I have an object uh, over here, it's going to be, it's going to form some image. Maybe that's over here. So let's draw our optical axis and let's draw a couple of rays passing through this lens. Uh, so there's one ray and then let's say this is another ray. But you might very well ask, well, uh, I mean, you chose to draw this ray, but couldn't you have drawn a ray that goes up above the lens? Like what's stopping you from doing that? Uh, and the answer is absolutely nothing. Um, each of these points on this object are emanating spherical waves or roughly spherical waves and the rays are just perpendicular to those waves so we do in fact have rays emanating outside of our lens and we can't capture these so our lens these are never interacting with our lens and you might uh you might think that this is going to limit the ability we have to collect light so this is going to limit our light collection because if we had an infinitely large lens, so we had a lens that went like all the way up here, all the way down there, then we should be able to collect all possible light emitted from this object. Um, but that's not going to be the case. Uh, I don't have enough money to buy an infinite lens, first of all. And if I did, I'm not sure I could find a manufacturer to make me one. So we have to deal at the end of the day with the finite extent of this lens or the fact that it's got some diameter, let's call it D. And this is dealt with uh, using the language. So using this thing called the aperture stop. And the aperture stop is just defined as whatever element uh, is limiting our light collection ability. And sometimes this won't be a lens. So here we've got a finite lens, but we might introduce some physical stop. So some uh, physical object that blocks light from getting any further into the system. And this we would call our aperture stop. So sometimes we give the name to a lens, sometimes we give the name to a physical object, but really the idea of an aperture stop is just whatever object or element uh, is limiting our light or limiting the maximum angle that we can accept light at. So limiting, I'm going to say our angle of collection. And so let's go back to the case where we just have this single lens and this lens is our aperture stop. Uh, so let me redraw these rays. Uh, you might ask, well, okay, what is the maximum angle? Let's call it theta max uh, that we can accept light at. And in this case, we can just draw it. So I'm going to erase this, uh, this ray so that we can draw our special ray. And this is the ray that's going to actually nick the very edge of our aperture stop. So it's going to go from the bottom of the object to the very edge of the aperture stop, uh, back to the edge of the object. And this ray has an associated angle, which is our maximum angle that we can collect light at. And this ray is called our marginal ray. The marginal ray. Now, sometimes you might also see the marginal ray drawn from up here. So something that looks like this. Uh, so the marginal ray might instead look like that. Um, that's not how I draw the marginal ray and that's not how uh, most people draw the marginal ray. It's helpful for uh, visualizing where you form an image but much less helpful for calculating things like numerical aperture, among other things. And this ray and this angle are actually important for other reasons as well. Um, this also defines our numerical aperture of the system, which will define our diffraction limited resolution. So it's not just the light collection ability, uh, but this marginal ray actually determines much more interesting properties of our system, like its maximum resolution. And because of these two properties, we think of the marginal ray as a very special ray uh, because it lets us calculate and understand really fundamental properties of optical systems. And so when we do ray tracing, we generally almost always include the marginal ray because it's just that important. But now you might ask, well, what if I have a lens or what if I have multiple lenses or what if I have a lens and then something else blocking my 
uh, the, the maximum angle. So let's say my object is here. And if I were to draw out the, an angle that would just barely nick the edge of this first element, uh, this would be my, actually let's draw this so it's actually symmetric. So this, and let's draw this lens so it's a little larger so that it's clear that this is not our limiting element. So this is our fat lens, uh, and say that this gets imaged over here to some image. So this is our image, this is our object. Now uh, this finite lens, it does have a certain diameter, d, but it's no longer our limiting aperture. So we say that this is our aperture stop, because this is what's limiting the maximum angle that we can send a ray in. So if I tried to send in a ray of a slightly larger angle, it would get blocked by this aperture, even though it would be able to pass through the lens and reform an image over here. Now, aperture stops don't have to be placed in front of a lens either. They could be placed uh, behind the lens and still be the limiting element. So if I place the aperture stop over here, uh, you see that it's still limiting the maximum ray that I can set into the, send into the system because I could try sending a ray of higher angle uh, and it would successfully pass through the lens, but then it would get blocked by this, now we call this the aperture stop. And so your aperture stop can really be located just about anywhere in your optical system. And you might have multiple lenses. Uh, so you might have, I don't know, two or three lenses or more. Uh, you might also have a physical stop here, uh, but you, uh, you don't necessarily know what the aperture stop is until you actually trace the ray uh, throughout the system. And then you will find uh, what the aperture stop is. And actually this is not, <laughs> The light light should bend after going through lenses. I ignore this di this uh, this ray tracing diagram. So let's say you have a multi element optical system. Um, how do you figure out where the aperture stop is? So maybe we've got a couple lenses. Maybe we've got a diverging lens over here, and then maybe we've got a physical stop uh, over here. And this notation is just these white lines are blocking light, and these are the edges of this physical stop. And then maybe we've got an object over here, and this is along the optical axis. So how do we figure out which one of these elements is our aperture stop? So maybe it's this lens, L1, maybe it's lens 2, maybe it's this lens, or maybe it's our this physical stop here. Conceptually, the process is exactly the same as it was before. We need to test, we need to send out some test ray with some angle. Well, it's not called this theta max, let's just call this theta. And then we just need to see where this ray goes. So uh, that's in general going to depend on the focal lengths of these lenses, but maybe it looks something like this. So maybe our things look something like this, and then our image is formed over here. In this case, it's not this physical stop that is actually limiting us. And so let's send out another ray. Let's test out another ray. Uh, maybe that ray looks like this. So like so. And then we're still forming an image. Actually, this should converge to the bottom of the image. So maybe the image is actually formed here. So let's say that our image is right here. Boop. Uh, and so this is going to be our maximum ray angle. And it looks like one of these two lenses is our limiting lens. Let's say that this lens, lens 2, was slightly bigger than lens 1. So let's say that it's actually larger than our first lens. Then this lens is actually our aperture stop. So this is the process we want to carry out conceptually to figure out which of these elements is our aperture stop and what the angle is of our marginal ray. Uh, and there's a more mathematical way to do it uh, using transfer matrices, uh, which I'll go over in a, in a future video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye.